Hey, hey guys. So I, I just found out about this YouTube algorithm thing. I, I, don't, I can't explain it, but they said that it would be awesome if you guys could give me a likes, subscribe, share, um, hit the notifications, and was, oh, comment. Yeah, after the show, shoot me a comment. You like it? Shoot me a comment. You hate it? Shoot me a comment. If I hit these buttons... <laughs> If you think I hit the buttons too much, let me know. Let me know. We're trying to make this a better show for you and for me. All right, let's start the show. Talking shit, getting clicks. With your boy, Mo, three times. That's right. Talking shit, getting clicks, original podcast. Don't, yeah. I'm hitting the air horns because these are the me, me, me episodes with Mo, 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 three times. Let the children sing. Children say thank you. I couldn't have done that better if I introduced myself. All right, today we are going to be talking about the events leading up to the FBI raid or surge, whatever you want to call it, on Mar a Lago a couple days ago. Right? Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Um, Then we're going to talk about some other stuff. Donald Trump dealing with the World Organization in New York and depositions and pleading fifths we're gonna do that because that's what you guys asked for out of my strong 16 strong, they were like hey uh, why don't you do some trump stuff we like when you talk that shit all right let's get into it okay in mid-january the national archives and record administration retrieve records and arrange transfer from the Trump team. Remember, key word is retrieved, not recover. They retrieved about 15 boxes in mid-January at or from Mar-a-Lago. Now, the reason for the National Archives and Records Administration, going for it, we'll just consider them archives. The reason why they were able to go um, retrieve these documents from Mar-a-Lago is because in December of 2021, a Trump representative actually reached out to the archives guys and said, hey, we got some stuff here sitting in Florida. We got some boxes of stuff. I don't know what it is, but come please pick this shit up because we think you're supposed to have it. And that happened in December of 2021, which tells me Trump had almost been out of office for a year. For a year. And yet he still had documents sitting around. We're going to find out what kind of documents he had sitting around. Going for it. Let's keep it moving. January 31st, the archive agency reports in an official statement that Trump tore up records. And that they had found records that had been torn up by Trump. Okay, so when the archives guys reports that they have torn up documents some critics start to point and suggest that these actions indicate it was a cover-up me personally i was like no he's not covering up anything i didn't think it was a cover-up um because i just thought he was neglectful like it what these documents weren't ripped up because he was trying to hide something these documents were ripped up because CNN and MSNBC and I believe even Fox News throughout the Trump administration always said that he had torn up documents and reports after they were meetings were done. Matter of fact, hold on. There is a uh, political article written in 2018 by Annie Carney, 
and yeah, the, I got I had to write this down. The articles titled "Meet the Guys Who Taped Trump's Papers Back Together." There were two gentlemen. Actually, it was a whole department, but two gentlemen that were interviewed in in this interview named Solomon Larty and Reginald Young Jr. And they both worked in the archives department at the White House. And Solomon Lartley said that his job had become, yes, yeah, Solomon basically said that his job was to piece back together documents that Donald Trump had ripped up. And it wasn't like, like I said before, it wasn't a cover up. Donald Trump would be like, okay, meeting over. And he'd tear a paper. And sometimes that paper would be torn long ways and you'd just see one piece of tape going through it. Sometimes he'd do the double tear. So you got four pieces. Sometimes he'd get reports or news about somebody, a political opponent or something. And theatrically, he would rip these little things into shreds. So much so that they were taping together little tiny pieces of paper that Solomon and Reginald Young Jr. said, Solomon Lartley and Reginald Young Jr., both employees of the archives guys, um, said that they were piecing these things together like it was a puzzle. Dude, these documents look like the toe of a damn Jordan 3. You know, the elephant print, it's beautiful on a Jordan 3. But when you're looking at uh, the State Department's recommendation for security um, during 9-11 or something like that, and you've torn at the pieces, it's not beautiful, guys. It is not beautiful all right oh yeah in the political article um solomon lartley actually says that he's been working for the administration for 30 years and he has never seen any administration during his time there where he's had to piece together documents using scotch tape guys <laughs> he's just said he's never done it 30 years which is what in 30 years which is we're talking about in the 90s or so we'll, we'll give him bill clinton we'll give him um clinton again we'll give him george w we'll give him george w again and then we'll give him barack obama and then we'll give him barack obama again and then donald trump <laughs> oh yeah by the way those guys got fired solomon Reginald, and basically their whole team was ousted. So February 18th, this is when the story basically hits um, the, the news. And they talk about the boxes being retrieved and the archive finding that there were actually not only ripped up documents, documents that had been pieced together and documents that were still ripped up um, in their findings, but they also found classified documents. And this, and this right here is where it gets sketchy, and this is where it gets scary, even for the National Archives guys, because they end up writing the magical CYA email. You know, that I got to cover my ass email, and they sent this email um, to a Congressional Oversight Committee, and they also sent it to the Department of Justice. <laughs> Yeah, the NARA, National Archives and Records Administration, called the popo <laughs> on old DJ Trump. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Okay, so on February 25th, a week later, the NARA seeks to have an investigation, and why not? All right, so then spring rolls around, and the agents start building their case. <laughs> they are all in. To the point that they send FBI agents to Mar-a-Lago to get more information about where the classified materials may be. Yep, and in the spring of 2022, federal officials also served the subpoena for some documents believed to be at that estate. All right, now by August 5th, the U.S. Magistrate Judge Bruce Reinhardt in South Florida approves the application for the search warrant, finding the FBI had probable cause to search Mar-a-Lago. Let's check out what does Judge Bruce Reinhardt look like. All right, and this is U.S. Magistrate Judge Bruce Reinhardt. 
the guy who approved the uh, FBI search warrant there. Okay, so when the search warrant is signed and carried out, the search warrant is sealed, and that's typical for any pending in investigation. Attorney General Merrick Garland later said that he personally approved the decision to seek the search warrant. All right, and here's Merrick Garland. If Merrick Garland actually is the one who's... Um, Said, go ahead, get what you guys need. It's kind of like Bad Boys 2. Remember in Bad Boys, well, all the Bad Boys, and Bad Boys, Marcus and Mike Lowry are tearing up Miami. They are fucking Miami up. <laughs> That's my word, my one F word for the day. Peace to you, Pops. But, yeah, they're messing, they're tearing Miami down, and they are still trying to get this evidence that they need and... Mike Lowry really killed the only witness that they had. And, you know, Mark has got issues of his own, like personal issues. So he'd be taking that to work and bad boys. <laughs> Nevertheless, they go to the captain and they're like, yo, Cap, we just need this and this. And then the captain's like, Marcus, Mike, Joey Pants, he plays the cap. <laughs> like, whatever you want, whatever you need, just get this guy, bring him down. <laughs> And that's what Merrick Garland is doing. He's just like, please, FBI, DOJ, Tom Cruise, bring Donald Trump down. <laughs> Actually, the 8th of August, when the FBI executes that search warrant at Mar-a-Lago in an unprecedented escalation to law enforcement scrutiny of the former president. You damn right. You damn right. <laughs> breathe. Richard Nixon was about to go under the jail for Watergate, and guess what? The feds didn't even come to his house like this. <laughs> this shit is unprecedented. <laughs> Usually the FBI, when dealing with people such as Donald Trump and others that are um, either powerful, influential, or rich, which means they're all kind of powerful. <laughs> when dealing with these types of people, the FBI will call ahead and say, hey, I mean, they're not going to be some lay down suckers. They're going to be like, listen, we're coming to talk to you tomorrow at 9 a.m. You're not going to be like, hey, 9 a.m. is not good for me. No, you're going to talk to them. They're going to be at your house at 845 and you will be talking to them at 9 a.m. <laughs> What's so unprecedented about this is that these guys, all right, they didn't kick down the door or anything, but they didn't come without calling first. <laughs> Rude. And guess what? Trump's not home. <laughs> He's not even home during the search or raid or whatever we want to call it. <laughs> He's not home. Now, this is where the shit hits the fan. People are going to Mar-a-Lago. They got their Trump hats on. They're over there having little rallies. CNN is fucking busting nuts on themselves. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> that was disgusting. Yes, CNN was having orgasms because of this. I know Pelosi was. Can you imagine the dust, the dust that that lady produces? I, I, no disrespect, but all disrespect. The world's finding out. We're getting interested in it, and it's headline news. We heard about this in February, but now we're really hearing about this. And here is Christopher Ray in all his reptilian splendor. Because the FBI has these abilities. They have these special abilities, guys. And those special abilities is to intercept uh, different types of chatters on your internet, on your cellular phones. And they were receiving legitimate fucking threats of people wanting to harm um, FBI agents and other law enforcement individuals. That's what they wanted to do. They wanted to harm people, and Christopher Ray had to make an impromptu speech and an already previously scheduled engagement. He had to make an impromptu speech because they were getting so many legit threats of violence against law enforcement, right? But do not forget, we're going to move on from August 10th right now, but there is something very, very important that also took place. <laughs> Involving the Trump World Organization on August 10th. This is where I'm gonna take my water break, y'all, straight up. Get this off my face. 
Get it off my face. Let me take my water break. All right, I'm back. Water has been sipped. No longer parched or thirsty. Should have took a chapstick break. All right, chapstick break. Get that camera off. Get the camera off. Now. Regard me, regard me, I'm back. I'm back from my chapstick break. Chapstick slash water break. Alright, so where were we? Where were up there? That man, FBI director Christopher Ray. Trump was seething. Yo, he was seething. Stupid. He was seething. He was hated. Hey, the only thing is, I don't understand is that uh, in 2017, Donald Trump is the one who imported, imported, Freudian slip. He appointed Christopher Ray. That was him on Twitter, trying to appoint him via Twitter. 2017, he did that. All right, so the director of the FBI speaks out and um, he's calling out right-wing extremists on this one. The raid takes place on the 8th, and after a couple days, Merrick Garland holds a press conference. Let me get you visuals of these people. Let me show you Merrick Garland. So that's right. On the 11th, after days of public silence, Garland holds a brief press conference where he drops a major announcement. He says he will, in fact, ask the court to unseal the search warrant. And it is, like we said, an unusual step for a pending investigation to give up that information, but Garland said the public was entitled to know what prompted the extraordinary search at a former president's home. Um, Garland is the top cop, guys. He's the top cop, and his orders are, hey, listen, Christopher Ray, we know that you guys are getting threats. All the law enforcement are getting threats because people are saying that we are trying to take away their rights. And you know how the people get when their rights are, when they feel their rights are getting taken away. And stuff is on the fair. Haven't we seen all those um, I'm not wearing my mask videos? You know what I mean? Really, 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 really. But, but seriously. Um, so, yeah. Merrick Garland was like, fuck it. Let's show them everything that we got right now. No problem. And what's crazy is that, but yeah, on that morning, 42 year old Ricky Schiffer, oh, let's see what this guy looks like, decides that he's gonna try to breach the local branch of the FBI in Cincinnati. The damn Cincinnati field office, guys. He's gonna, this one man army is gonna try to, You stupid. You know how this ends for him, guys. You know? <laughs> you know how this ends for old Ricky Schiff? Schiffer? Exactly. Down the pipes. Stupid. He's dead, guys. He's dead. The American dream is dead. Ricky Schiffer, rest in peace. You were the American dream. You stupid. <laughs> He's fucking dumb, bro. I'm laughing at him. I'm laughing at him. Ricky Schiffer, I am laughing ha 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 at you. I know. I know some of you guys are gonna be quiet. You can listen to those Christmas, not me. Ricky, oh man, this is so dangerous. This is so dangerous, like, and to the point where the FBI director has to come out and say that there's not going to be violence against law enforcement tolerance. So on August 12th, Judge Reinhardt unseals the warrant, and 
we get to understand that there were documents that were taken that were labeled top secret. Top secret, guys. <laughs> top secret. There we go. But let me tell you something about this. As someone who has experiences working in a field that required sensitive clearances that there could be some things that are just mundane that are classified. There is information in packets that you and I both know that is still classified. But the reason for that classification is that, hey, that you're extra careful with this. That two, it stays out of the hands of people it's not supposed to get into. Where's my buttons? <laughs> Where's my buttons? <sighs> and they're finding bags of ripped up documents along with classified materials. Now, to be fair, Donald Trump at the time was commander in chief, which gives him some weight to throw around where he could classify a document, whatever he felt like classifying it for the most part. <laughs> But we're talking about these documents were sitting in Mar-a-Lago doing God knows what for over a year where Trump entertains people from the international community. Some people that have pristine backgrounds and some people that have sketchy backgrounds. I think we could all agree with that. And to have that information lying around um, is kind of just, oh my God, I want to say not presidential, but we got past being presidential years ago. It's just not safe. All right, so Trump complained that during the raid, they broke into his safe. He said that the raid itself was an act of prosecutorial misconduct. There it is. Prose prosecutorial misconduct it is so hard with these things on my face. But that's how God made me. That's how God made me with my big, beautiful lips. Big, beautiful lips. Big, beautiful lips. All right. All right. So, yeah, that's right. August 10th, big day for Donald Trump because he's in New York being deposed. Yes, there is a deposition. And he is being deposed by... Boom, boom, boom. You know who that is? Another attorney general. This one is from the state of New York, and her name is Letitia James. And yes, she is the attorney general of New York. And she's watching over the case um, between the state and Trump's world organization, how it may be violating banking. Hold on, let me get my chimes out for this guy. So I'm about to do a list. Trump's wor Trump organization may be violating banking, insurance, I'm struggling with that button, and tax laws. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they are bringing up and discussing and investigating whether the Trump organization committed and engaged in financial fraud. Insane. Insane. Oh yeah, in this deposition, blah, blah, blah. So we, we are only told that Donald Trump pled the fifth, which is kind of hypocritical. And yes, we're gonna take it there, guys. I got my Birdman hands because I'm ready to hit the button any minute right now to show you the hypocrisy. So they said that Donald Trump uh, pled the fifth, but they never said how many times. Let me tell you what. <laughs> Yo, according to Insider, um, Trump pled the fifth more than 440 times during his deposition in New York, answering only a question about, guess what? Bro, the only thing he gave was his name. 
That's some gangster shit. Straight up. So damn gangster. But wait, the hypocrisy part, I'll show you right now. Did I just snap my fingers and nothing happened? I love when I snap my fingers and... When you have your staff taking the Fifth Amendment, taking the Fifth so they're not prosecuted, when you have the man that set up the illegal server taking the Fifth, I think it's disgraceful. Fifth Amendment, Bob. The mob takes the Fifth. If you're innocent, why are you taking the Fifth Amendment? Fifth Amendment, horrible. Horrible. He pleaded the Fifth and that was the end. We never heard about him again. This is like Watergate. Only it's worse, because here, our foreign enemies were in a position to hack our most sensitive national security secrets. Yeah, that's right. We talked about Donald Trump. But when I said that about the documents, um, as I always go off, um, it was reported that one of the Trump representatives, a female, found um, classified documents in a woman's bathroom in Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> which questions me, which make, begs the question, could it have been Stormy Daniel? Could it have been Melania? But I ultimately think it was. Nancy Pelosi. Hey, bitch, come here. Uh, oh, my God. Let the children say. You thought I was going to say Ivanka, right? Yeah, I was going to say Ivanka. Foremost, um, I don't believe... I think this is one of those, let's just try to get Donald Trump on whatever, whatever. No, I don't believe he's getting the grace that a former president would get, but I don't think he lived his campaign or did his job like any other president that's come before him. Saying that, if he did take classified documents, then yeah. Do I think he deserves to be in jail? No. I don't think the Democrats want him in jail. They just don't want him running in 2024, and I agree with them. I agree. The reason why I don't want Donald Trump running in 24 is 2024, it's because of shit like this, that after a year out of the White House, you still haven't returned forms, that you constantly sat in meetings and ripped up documents. Sometimes just to theatrically show that, hey, this meeting's over. Sometimes to say that, hey, I hate this. But as a president, you are responsible. And you have to have discipline. You have to be organized. And you have to have the heart to be like, damn, I don't like this, but I am upholding this office. It's not about the man. It is about the position. It is about the office. It isn't about... President Trump, it is about the entire Trump administration. I would definitely, I've heard him talk shit. This is called talking shit, getting clicks. And I'm pretty sure he talks some of the best shit and me too as well. And I'm pretty sure we could clink a beer right here and there. And we could talk about some things and chop it up. And I am pretty sure people say that they actually like being around him. However, as a president of the United States, this is not it, bucko. The president should not inspire people to go to the FBI headquarters and um, try to fuck it up. The president should not inspire people to trample over into the United States Capitol and deface it and disrespect the heart of our American civilization. He should not inspire that type of hate that type of rhetoric, that type of divisiveness, that's not what a president should be. He's the spokesperson for America. And damn, 
bro, my shit is not suitable for work. I'm talking to adults here, and if kids want to, um, you know, catch it, they can catch it too, because it's, it's, it might have profanity in it, but this, talking shit, getting clicks, is definitely not profane. Mm. That's for my strong eight. I think we got 18 now. Strong 18 sub subscribers. And, you know, if you're getting political like this and you hate what I'm saying, listen, I'm just trying to tell you guys, I don't agree with him at all. I don't agree with Donald Trump at all. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, he's the reason or we want him back because of gas prices, because you and I both know Donald Trump don't got shit to do, very little to do with gas prices. We live not only in a democracy or a republic, we live in a capital Listic society where money fucking rules. <laughs> and usually people with money can stop, will have the FBI at least give them a courtesy call before they come crashing down on them. <laughs> but he didn't get that. He didn't get that. But you know what? I was too distracted by all the bullshit that was going on during his presidency that, oh my goodness, I couldn't see any of that good. <laughs> I couldn't. And I know that he's going to make a push for 2024. And if this is the way that the Democrats have to stop him, I mean, shit, they fucked up already two times. Hey, um, episode of Wire told me that if you go at the king, you best not miss. And they done missed the king twice. And this is the third time they going after him. So do you think I absolutely positively believe that these charges against Donald Trump are going to stick? No, these charges aren't going to stick. Ultimately, these charges are not going to stick. Those charges in New York where he pled 444 times about um, his Fifth Amendment right to shut the fuck up. Like... Like, this is not it. This is not it. This is not it. I'm upset now, guys. Sorry. I need another water break. All right, I'm back. All right, so moving on, this is where we're going to go to. We're going to go to the Munch, 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 Munch Club. So right now we're going to check out a young man named Antoine Sims. And his fuckery. S I M E S. Spell your first name again. A N T O I N E. O I N A. O I N E. O I N E. Okay. Right. So I'm basically just banned from here. Correct. Not Kennesaw. Um. His name. Their name. I can't remember how yeah, to... So we got new forms, so I don't worry. His name here, and then the manager's name is... That's what I think. So he's the manager or somebody else? Is the he's, uh, he's the owner. He's the owner of this. So that's why he feels like it. Okay, like I said, if you want to take it in the eye, you call it four Yeah. Nah, this is just 10, 10 books. I know. Is it 10, 17? I don't know yet. Demon, man. Yeah, yeah, I got the shades. Authorized representative of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's the address here? Uh, it was like. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta look it up. Sorry, damn address. What's the address? So. Uh, there's possibly a 1099, 2049 Comp Parkway. You got it? Yeah, I got it. You got it. Yeah. Uh, give me just a second. Excuse me, sir. So there's no secrets or nothing like that? No. no. So, so, so what, the way it's going to work is like, you're not going to get a fine for it. Yeah, no. Um, I'm going to get him to fill this out.
All right, Mr. Sims, come over here. I'm going to have you sign this. I'm not under arrest or anything, am I? No, sir. Uh, just come over here. I'm going to have you sign this real quick. I said I'm not under arrest or anything. No, no, you're not. Yeah, just come over here. I'm going to have you sign this real quick. You have to sign it saying that you're not going to come back. Yeah, you're you'll fill this part out. Can I see it, sir? Yeah. Will you come over here, man? Look, I'm, I'm afraid of y'all, sir. Why are you afraid? I've three years, sir. I'm All right, I'm I'm gonna walk you I'm, through. I'm, Why are you I'm, doing that? I know how to fill it out. Why are you sir? doing that? I know how to fill. Am I All right? Yeah. No, let's get it. Backside, backside, backside. Back ah! Taser deployed. Taser deployed. Ah! Put your hands out. Put your hands out. Ah! Hands out. Ah! Do not move. Ah! Put your hands out. Ah! Do not move. Ah! Do not move. Ah! Do not move. Ah! Give me contact. Ah! Now, why is that man over there? Oh, shit. That's how it's done. Um, so what had happened was, um... Crazy deranged. Yeah, my camera fell. My camera fell, but I'm all right. I'm okay. All right, so we were just watching um, Antoine Sims get arrested. Am I under arrest? Are you, no, yeah, and they just played tag. Yo, did you hear the taser shot? Like, that taser scream, and they be making, he making, woo, woo. I can't even go that high. I, I mean, if I got tased, I don't know if I could hit that high note. But he did, making them sex sounds, getting hit by that taser. Crazy deranged. I keep hitting that crazy deranged button because this MF are new. Yo, why would you do anything to get involved with the law when you know you got a warrant? Not just a warrant for some traffic tickets. Because me, if I... Like, just between you and me and, and, and the Strong 18, I got a couple of those easy pass things where you go into the easy pass and the easy pass don't work, so... You know, you get that $50 bill, and I say, get to those. F you to those. <laughs> but honestly, like, I don't be trying to be around cops because I don't want them bringing up my easy pass pass. <laughs> this mf got a whole damn body on him, and he's going to be bitching about some cold french fries from McDonald's. Dog, dog, where you're going, there is no Mickey D's. <laughs> There's no Mickey D's, bro. Now, you can watch the whole videos. It's on YouTube somewhere. It's about 15 minutes. The cop actually goes in, and he, and he's actually talking to Antoine before going in and talking to the owner of the restaurant. Antoine seems to be calm about it. He's like, listen, um, basically, McDonald's was jacked up. That's a whole nother show. You stupid. That's how I feel. <laughs> Let's laugh it out. Can't help but laugh. Can't help but laugh. Cannot help but laugh. Cannot help but laugh when it comes to fa I, yo, if he, he got the other body, the body that he got um, the warrant for, uh, if it was a fast food restaurant or a TSA agent, I'm telling you, I would not be surprised. <laughs> Stupidity at its finest. Stupidity at its finest. Like, I don't even want to even go into that whole show because we just did uh, Donald Trump and what that means for the free world. But, yeah, there was a dummy at McDonald's. Yo, somebody in Brooklyn got killed over some cold fries. And let me tell you what. People, you was always put McDonald's fries up there with the tops. Like, they are the goat of fries. But I'm telling you, once they get past um, 82 degrees, once they get into the low 80 degrees, those fries taste like garbage, bro. Garbage. Straight up. I'm not loving it. I'm not. I'm not loving it. You stupid. You know I am. All right, so guys... We talked about Donald Trump and the events leading up to the FBI raid at his precious Mar-a-Lago, right? We talked about the uh, whole cast of characters going from Merrick Garland, who's like, yo, I told them to go get the subpoena, to get the warrant, to get what they got to get, to the National Archives and Records Association that upon going over just to retrieve some simple items and doing a courtesy that may have been left over, Stumbled upon documents that were classified. Yeah. <laughs> classified documents. And some of them said that there were nuclear information on it. <laughs> There's some people who want to rock like that. I don't want to build walls, guys. I want to build bridges. <laughs> I 
I do. And that is why I have to let you know that I will be running as a independent presidential candidate for the 2024 elections. That's right. I want to be your president. I said it. I'm just taking shots right now. Um, And then, yeah. So Antoine Sims, Donald Trump, we know you both like your Mickey D's. Yo, man, like I can remember how many times that I've been at McDonald's and I've been so disappointed from getting a chicken sandwich that looked like it had been sitting under the heater for like three days to getting a quarter pounder that was still damn near all pink on the inside to missing food items to the ice cream machine not working. Right. That's fucking cheeks, guys. That is butt cheeks. Pop, pop, pop. Ice cream machine don't work. That's how the ice cream machine sounds. That ain't the ice cream machine. All right, guys. Thank you for hanging out with me, watching, talking shit, getting clicks. We'll be back at it with more Trump updates, with more crazy crimes, and with more shit to talk and more clicks to get. Get me the fuck out of here. Oh, my God. Get the, ca- get the camera off. These guys. You're all fired. You're fired, guys. I bet the camera's still on me. Talking shit, getting clicks, original podcast. With your boy Mo three times. And you have been watching. The me, me, me episodes of Talking Shit Getting Clicks Original Podcast. Most three times.